All rise. Oui, vous l'avez. The International Residual Mechanism for Criminal Tribunals is now in session. La Science Mechanism International appelée à exercer la fonction residual de tribunal panel et OED. Please be seated. Good morning to everyone. Mr. Registrar, would you please call the case? Thank you and good morning, Your Honours. This is case MICT 1596T. The prosecutor was the Jovic Stanisic and Frank Rosimatovic. Thank you. And may we have the appearances, please? Good morning, Mr. President, Your Honours, Counsel. Uh, for the prosecution, I'm Douglas Stringer, appearing with Grace Harbour, Earl Sullivan, and Thomas Logel. Uh, good, mo good morning, Your Honours. Um, for Mr. Sanisic, myself, Wayne Jordash, Joe Holmes, and Advet uh, Malvaya. Good morning, Your Honours. For the Simatovic defense, uh, we are here in the courtroom Melanie Vranjes, Vladimir Petrovic, and myself, Mikhailo Bakrat. Thank you. Thank you. I begin by welcoming everyone. We were last together in this courtroom on the 8th of October 2020 when the testimony of the last witness in this trial concluded. Today's hearing is scheduled in accordance with Rule 103, which provides that after the presentation of all the evidence and the filing of parties' final trial briefs, the parties may present closing arguments. The last decision on the admission of evidence in this case was issued on the 23rd of February, and I thank the parties for the subsequent filing of their clear and comprehensive finding, final trial briefs. In accordance with the scheduling order issued on the 18th of March, the prosecution has four hours to present its closing arguments which will be heard today. Tomorrow, the defense teams will have five hours in total to present their closing arguments with the time equally divided between them, unless, of course, both defense teams agree otherwise. On Wednesday, the trial chamber will hear the prosecution's arguments and rebuttal, which should not exceed one hour, and the defense arguments and rejoinder, which should take one hour in total. The trial chamber has informed the parties that it is amenable to granting limited additional time if needed for the presentation of the parties' rebuttal and rejoinder arguments. I further note that the trial chamber is currently seized of two prosecution motions filed on the 19th and 24th of March, respectively, to strike references to non-admitted material or to the record of other cases as well as any accompanying text from the defense's trial briefs, final trial briefs. The trial chamber will adjudicate the motions in a decision to be issued in due course or in the trial judgment. Should the parties make reference to the contested material in their closing arguments, the trial chamber will either consider or disregard such references following the adjudication of the merits of the prosecution motions. Lastly, I note that both accused are currently on provisional release and, they, and that they have validly waived their right to be present at the hearing of the closing arguments. 
I now invite the prosecution to commence their closing arguments. Thank you and good morning, Mr. President, your honors and counsel. The chamber now has before it a vast body of evidence which in our submission establishes beyond any reasonable doubt the responsibility of the accused, Yovitsa Stanisic and Franco Samadovich, for the crimes of persecution, murder, deportation, and forcible transfer, which they committed as members of a joint criminal enterprise, the JCE. The prosecution final trial brief sets out in detail the evidence that proves each and every aspect of our case. We are mindful of the Chamber's direction to focus our submissions this week on responding to the arguments made by the defense in their final briefs, and it is our intention to do just that, drawing, of course, on the prosecution written submissions and on the evidence itself. At every turn, the efforts of these accused to avoid responsibility for their conduct and to point the finger of blame at other members of the joint criminal enterprise, at subordinates, and even at each other, have failed. The inescapable conclusion is that these accused are guilty of the crimes they are charged with. Your Honors, in our submissions, I will address a few of the ways in which the prosecution case and applicable law have been mischaracterized in ways that suit the defense. I'll describe how the accused use their functions and roles as officials of the Serbian State Security Service of the Serbian Ministry of Interior, the MUP, to advance the common criminal purpose. Then I will touch upon some of the accused's significant contributions acting as channels of communication and in arming Serb forces in Croatia and Bosnia. After me, my colleague, Ms. Harbour, will continue with the arguments on the accused's significant contributions, starting with ways in which Stanisic and Samadovic contributed to the CCP, the Common Criminal Purpose, through three units associated with the Serbian DB, the unit they formed in 1991, known at various times as the JPN, Red Berets, Grey Wolves, or JATD, and known throughout 1991 to 95 as Frankie's Men. How they contributed through the Serbian Volunteer Guard, the SDG, commanded by JCE member Arkan Jelko Rajnatovic, and through the Scorpions unit under Slobodan Medic, known as Botsa. Ms. Harbour will then address how the accused significantly contributed to the common purpose by training Serb forces through their vast network of training camps. We will then turn to the role Stanisic and Samadovic played in regard to various of the charged crime-based locations, first with Ms. Harbour addressing Kraina, SBWS, Bosnia Herzegovina municipalities in 1992, after which, in my final submissions, Your Honors, I will address their role in the Podrinje operations in eastern Bosnia in 1993 and the Serbian DB unit's joint operations in 1995. Next, Jovis Stanisic devotes many words in his brief talking about his superior, Slobodan Milosevic, the president of Serbia, presenting him as a man of peace, working to end conflict by supporting peace plans such that neither Milosevic nor, by, ex by extension, Stanisic himself could have shared the intent and goals of the Bosnian Serb leadership as they continued to advance the common plan in Bosnia. We will dispel that myth. Finally, Your Honors, I'll conclude with some final remarks 
regarding the impact on victims of the crimes and ethnic cleansing that was directed against thousands of victims across two countries by these accused and their fellow JCE members. But let's first take a few minutes to recall why we are here. Skabernia was a small town inhabited by ethnic Croats in the Kraina region of Croatia. You should be seeing a slide now. On the 18th of November in 1991, Skabernia fell inside the territory of what had been proclaimed as the Serbian Autonomous District, the SAO of Kraina. It was attacked by a combination of Serb forces the next day. One witness described how the attack was conducted. Quote, this was hell. You see dismembered human bodies around you. These were horrible moments. You could not hear anything from the shooting, from the mayhem all around. The most terrible things happened, killings. People, civilians were being dragged out of basements. There were killings, massacres. I lost half my family on that day. I saw my father's throat slit on that day. These are the words of eyewitness and survivor Marko Miljanic, speaking of the atrocities committed during the Skrbernia massacre on the 18th of November, 1991. The evidence is on that is in row A1 of your sheet, your honors. The massacre and expulsion of Croatian civilians at Skabernia marked the completion of a campaign of violent attacks and forced displacement against the Croat civilian population in towns and villages throughout the Kraina region, which had begun earlier in the summer of 1991. This campaign was carried out by a variety of Serb military, police, and volunteer units that were trained and equipped by these accused. Let me turn now to Vukovar and some images of Vukovar. On the very same day, the 18th of November, 1991, far from Skabernia, on the other side of Croatia in eastern Slavonia, the town of Vukovar fell to Serb forces after a prolonged military attack and siege. The town was a smoking ruin. The smell of death hung in the air as bodies lay strewn on the streets and piled up in makeshift morgues. In the days that followed, Vukovar fell into a lawless chaos of death and dispossession machete-wielding Chetniks and local territorial defense personnel roamed freely, murdering and looting as the local Croat population, dazed and exhausted after months of siege, emerged from their basements and shelters. Thousands of non-Serb residents of Vukovar fled their homes on foot in long columns or were bussed out of Vukovar with whatever possessions they could carry. Like Skabernia, we have a map now if we could put up. Like Skabernia in the Kraina, the fall of Vukovar marked the successful completion of a months long campaign of attacks, killings, and forced displacement of ethnic Croats and other non Serbs who'd been unfortunate enough to be living in the declared Serbian Autonomous District, the SAO, of Slavonia, Baranja, and Western Shroud the SBWS. As in the Kraina, this all took place during the latter half of 1991. As in Kraina, units controlled, armed, and directed by these accused participated in the campaign with other Serb forces. Four months later, after the Skabernia massacre and the fall of Vukovar, Serb forces, most notably Jelko Raznatovic, Arkham, and members of the Serbian Volunteer Guard, or SDG, a 
attacked the Muslims living in the town of Dialina, not in Croatia. Now their focus was Bosnia. Archon led the attack, killing and terrorizing Muslim civilians and driving them from their homes. He had deployed to Bialina from his training camp and base located in Erdut, up in the SBWS region of Croatia, not far from Vukovar. In Bialina, the bodies of 45 civilians, including women and children, were collected from streets and houses. Most had been shot in the chest, mouth, temple, back of the head, some at close range. This is evidence row eight, A3. In the months that ensued, Serb forces engaged in a prolonged ethnic cleansing campaign across huge swaths of Bosnia, including Zvornik, Bosanski Samac, Birchko, Doboj, Sanski Most, killing, detaining, and persecuting remaining Muslims and Croat civilians, creating an atmosphere of fear and terror intending for them to flee. Your Honors, these crimes spread across Kraina, the SAO SBWS, and Bosnia were all closely connected in time. They shared common perpetrators and had the same outcome, the forcible removal of the non-Serb population. This was no coincidence. These crimes and hundreds of others detailed in the evidence in this case were neither spontaneous nor disorganized. To the contrary, they formed part of a well-planned, highly coordinated, and systematic campaign of violence targeting the non-Serb population of Croatia and Bosnia-Herzegovina, ethnic Croats, Bosnian Muslims, Bosnian Croats, Hungarians, Slovaks. The goal was to create ethnic Serb-controlled territories in Croatia and Bosnia from which these non-Serb populations were to be violently and permanently removed. When all was said and done, some 340,000 non-Serbs had been forcibly expelled from their homes and communities across both countries and this figure is a conservative minimum. This was the intended common criminal purpose, the CCP, and it was shared in advance by a group, what we call the Joint Criminal Enterprise, JCE, a group of high-level Serb political, military, and police figures across Serbia, Croatia, and Bosnia. The accused in this case, Jovica Stanisic, and Franko Samadovic were without question members of that enterprise who made important contributions to its goal. Ethnic cleansing on this scale could never have happened without the support and direction of Serbian President Slobodan Milosevic. He was the president of Serbia, but the Serb leaders he directed and supplied in Croatia and Bosnia looked to him as their president as well. His power and authority were unquestioned. The British diplomat Sir Ivor Roberts put it this way, quote, Milosevic was a one-man state who made all the decisions. That's evidence row A4. The Serb territories in Croatia and Bosnia, the Serbian autonomous regions, in Croatia, I mentioned, which in 1992 combined to form the Republika Srpska Krajina, the RSK, and the pro proclaimed Serb Republic in Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Republika Srpska, or RS. They were utterly and completely dependent on Milosevic and Serbia for their continued existence and, importantly, their ability to conduct the ethnic cleansing campaigns that forcibly removed non-Serbs from their midst. In this, Milosevic ran the show from beginning to end. The Serbian Ministry of Interior, the MUP, 
was a primary vehicle through which Milosevic directed and supported the implementation of the common criminal purpose. And this brings us to Jovica Stanisic and Franco Samadovic. Stanisic and Samadovic, as prominent officials of the Serbian MUPS State Security Service, the DB, Serbia's premier intelligence and counterintelligence body, contributed in a variety of ways to the CCP. They established training centers in Serbia, Croatia, and Bosnia. They deployed instructors to train those fighters whose units contributed to the ethnic cleansing. They armed the Serb forces that implemented the criminal purpose. They deployed the police and paramilitary units they controlled, including their own Serbian DB unit. Serbian DB personnel and their unit took part in the violent takeovers of towns and villages in Croatia and Bosnia, where many non-Serbs were expelled. The accused communicated and coordinated communications and operations with other members of the JCE and members of other Serb forces that were doing the same. Your Honors, Jovica Stanisic and Franko Samadovic contributed to virtually every aspect of the common criminal purpose at all times and in all places from 1991 through 1995. Like Milosevic, their boss, they were in this from the beginning to the end. Your Honors have directed the parties to focus their submissions on the other party's final trial briefs. So what do Stanisic and Samadovic argue? <clears throat> Rather than engaging the case charged in the indictment, that of a joint criminal enterprise, Stanisic mischaracterizes the prosecution case and what it is the prosecution must prove in an attempt to deflect the Chamber's attention from the issues that matter we will set that straight. When it suits him, Stanisic casts himself as a highly competent, effective security and intelligence professional of the Serbian DB. Milosevic's emissary and implementer handling international crises and negotiations. See Stanisic's brief at 167 to 179. At other times, when it suits him, Stanisic casts himself as an uninformed Serbian DB figurehead, betrayed by his closest lieutenants and subordinates, including Samadovic himself, who are said to have engaged in frolics and foreign military adventures, man manipulating entire administrations of the Serbian DB without his knowledge or approval. We will talk about that. Samadovic casts himself as a low or medium level operative of the Serbian DB, playing no role other than that of an intelligence officer gathering intelligence, such that he could not have formed criminal intent to join the enterprise. The evidence does not support this claim and shows to the contrary that Samadovic steadily progressed in title and responsibility within the Serbian DB under Jovica Stanisic, rising eventually to the post of chief of the second administration. He was a special advisor to his boss, Jovica Stanisic, and worked frequently and directly with or at the behest of Stanisic, very often carrying out field operations advancing the criminal plan outside of Serbia, in Croatia, and in Bosnia. Samadovic also asserts frequently that he never acted without the authorization of his superior, Jovica Stanisic. For example, see his brief at paragraphs 43 and 239. Well, Your Honors, on this, we completely agree. The evidence clearly establishes that in his capacity as an operative and official of the Serbian state security 
Franco Samadovich never acted without the knowledge and approval of Jovica Stanisic. Timing is everything. And for Stanisic, the timing suits him quite favorably. He claims conveniently, conveniently that the Serbian DB unit he established in 1991, what he calls the nascent unit, was disbanded in March of 1992, just prior to the Serb forces ethnic cleansing campaign came to Bosnia at the end of March 92. Therefore, any formerly Serbian DB unit personnel committing crimes in those operations were just free agents with no connection to Stanisic and the DB. The Serbian DB unit named the JATD was conveniently formed in August 1993 after the initial wave of ethnic cleansing in Bosnia had subsided. Agreeing that the Bosnian Serb leadership Karadzic, Krajisnik, and the others did in fact implement a common criminal plan of ethnic cleansing in Bosnia from 1992. That's Stanisic's brief, paragraphs 824, 825. Stanisic claims that Milosevic and by extension himself had, quote, parted company, unquote, with the Bosnian Serbs in October of 1991 and worked for peace thereafter Convenient timing, indeed. Finally, Stanisic devotes much of his brief cultivating the image of a pacifistic Slobodan Milosevic and Jovica Stanisic working doggedly in the pursuit of peace during 1992 to 1995 to end the conflict and avert a humanitarian disaster. As such, they could not have shared intent with the JCE members in Croatia and Bosnia who continued to implement and consolidate their ethnic cleansing goals. Well, Your Honors, quite to the contrary, we will revisit the evidence demonstrating that Milosevic, with both of the accused, continued to support and direct JCE members in Croatia and Bosnia until the bitter end in late 1995, after the RSK had collapsed in August of that year in Operation Storm, and with Republika Srpska on the brink of collapse the following month. Stanisic invites us to consider their motivations during that period, and we will do just that. There was nothing humanitarian or pacifistic about it. On Stanisic's mischaracterizations of our case, Your Honors, he mischaracterizes the applicable JCE law to suggest the prosecution is required to prove legal elements that it is not. Second, Stanisic repeatedly suggests that the prosecution charged and must prove that the goal of the JCE was the establishment of a so-called Greater Serbia, although he never actually defines what that is. On the law, Stanisic misapplies applicable law on JCE liability for crimes perpetrated by tools, that is, principal perpetrators on the ground who physically committed the crimes. He does this in two ways. Contrary to what he suggests, this is his brief at paragraphs 3 to 12, the law provides that the JCE member using the tool to perpetrate crimes need not be one of the accused. Reading his brief at times, you would think that Samadovic is the only member of the JCE. Second, despite his suggestion to the contrary, the JCE member need not be in command of the tools used to physically perpetrate the crimes. On the first point in his brief at paragraph 9, Your Honors, Stanisic claims that the prosecution has not demonstrated a, quote, sufficient link between Stanisic and the tools in relation to each alleged procurement, end quote. If he is suggesting that JCE liability requires proof that Stanisic or Samadovic were linked to every tool 
for every physical perpetrator procured to commit every crime, he is wrong. We refer your honors to paragraph 168 of the Marditch Appeals Judgment, paragraph 12, 1256 of the Shainovich Appeals Judgment. Rather, Stanisich is responsible for crimes perpetrated by tools when those crimes can be imputed to at least one JCE member. As such, Stanisic and Samadovich are liable not only for crimes perpetrated by their own tools, the units they used, such as their Serbian DB unit, but also for the crimes that can be imputed to other JCE members, such as fellow JCE member Milan Martic through the Krajina police, or to Serbian MUP colleague and fellow JCE member Radovan Stojic, Baja, who was in charge of the SBWS police and territorial defense that committed crimes in the SBWS. The many crimes of Arkan and the Serbian Volunteer Guard are attributable to Stanisic and Samadovic in several ways. Through Arkan himself, who was a member of the JCE, through fellow JCE member Baja, who had field command over Archon in the SBWS, and directly to the accused themselves based on their and the Serbian DB's own links to and use of Archon. On the second legal point, Your Honors, Stanisic suggests that the prosecution's case is premised on command of the three units that is, the Serbian DB unit, the Serbian Volunteer Guard, and the Scorpions. Your Honors are referred to Stanisic's brief, paragraphs 21, 38, 39, 52. However, the indictment does not charge the accused with command responsibility under Article 7.3 of the ICTY statute, which is what would apply here. But that is not our case. The formal command relationship is not necessary to establish JCE liability for the acts of tools. We're going to put some jurisprudence on uh, a slide for your honors as we can look at it together. This is paragraph 226 from the Kreisnik <coughs> Appeal Judgment. <coughs> The establishment of a link between the crime in question and a member of the JCE is a matter to be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. I'll just read, Your Honor, since we're not seeing the slide. Factors indif indicative of such a link include evidence that the JCE member explicitly or implicitly requested the non-JCE member to commit such a crime or instigated, ordered, encouraged, or otherwise availed himself of the non-JCE member to commit the crime. We can take that down now. The Marditch Appeals Judgment at paragraphs 187 and 205 similarly applied a test of authority or control as opposed to command in attributing Marditch with responsibility for crimes perpetrated by the JNA, TO, and Militia Kraina. As is clear from the prosecution's brief, each JCE member had the necessary link to the crimes in question through the tools they used to carry out the common criminal purpose. It is not necessary that the physical perpetrators are used by the accused themselves. It is sufficient that they are used by other JCE members who share the criminal intent with the accused. So, Your Honors, whether it's crimes committed by members of units that Stanisic and Samadovic used, or crimes committed by members of Serb forces used by other JCE members with whom they shared intent, Samadovic and Stanisic are responsible for all the crimes charged in the indictment.
Another mischaracterization I will address briefly relates to the so-called Greater Serbia. By our count, Stanisic refers to the term Greater Serbia 14 times in his final trial brief. He tries to make it an element of the case so that he can then argue it wasn't proved. Greater Serbia might be their case, but it's not ours. The term does not appear in the indictment. The prosecution pretrial brief mentions it twice, and it's mentioned once in opening statement, but always in relation to Vojislav Šešel, who was, of course, a very vocal proponent of Greater Serbia. If we could please put up the slide the next slide, I'd like to direct your honor's attention to paragraph 13 of our indictment. This is what paragraph 13 alleges. The objective of this joint criminal enterprise was the forcible and permanent removal of the majority of non-Serbs, principally Croats, Bos Bosnian Muslims, Bosnian Croats, from large areas of Croatia and Bosnia through the commission of the crimes of persecution, murder, deportations, inhumane acts, forcible transfer. This is what we must prove. So whenever Stanisic makes assertions about the alleged goal of a greater Serbia, we suggest the chamber should consider instead whether the prosecution proved this, paragraph 13 of the indictment. And in our submission, the evidence proves paragraph 13 overwhelmingly. The goal of the common criminal purpose was ethnic separation by violent means. The crimes in Croatia and Bosnia demonstrate that, and the six strategic goals announced by Bosnian Serb leadership in May of 1992 confirm it. As Bosnian Serb leader Momčilo Krajznik said, Ethnic separation was the primary goal, the most important one. This was the main goal from the beginning and it remained the goal during the entirety of the joint criminal enterprise. <clears throat> Your Honors, I'd like now to talk about some of Stanisic and Samadovic's contributions to the common criminal purpose as officials of the Serbian DB. Both Stanisic and Samadovic assert throughout their briefs that the DB was simply an intelligence organization and their activities and, tension and attention were devoted to their intelligence function. See Stanisic's brief at 134, went to 136, Samadovic 180 and 187. We agree with half of that. Formally, according to its rules and regulations, the Serbian DB was an intelligence and counterintelligence gathering body. But as we will see, several well-placed and well-informed witnesses tell us, each in their own way, that when it came to actions contributing to the common criminal purpose, Stanisic and Samadovic acted well beyond the official competencies and authority of the Serbian DB, using the DB to advance the criminal plan. The first of these witnesses is the defense expert witness, Milan Milosevic. He provided an exhaustive account of how the Serbian DB was supposed to operate based upon the official rules and regulations that defined its function. However, through the lens of his evidence and what the DB's rules and regulations authorized, we see time and time again that Stanisic and Samadovic acted beyond their authority using their DB positions when they were contributing to the criminal plan. This refutes their claims that they were just intelligence officials of an intelligence organization who were acting strictly in an intelligence gathering capacity. Here are some examples. The expert witness, Mr. Milosevic, himself a longtime employee of the Serbian DB, was very clear that the Serbian DB was established as nothing more, nothing less 
than an intelligence and counterintelligence organization. They gather and analyze information. Mr. Milosevic testified that the function of the public security side of the Serbian MUP, the uniformed police, that did encompass the possibility of a combat deployment. On the other hand, he said, the role of personnel of state security, the DB, was strictly to gather intelligence. Regarding training, Mr. Milosevic testified that the training of the DB operatives, quote, did not include any training in firearms in terms of taking apart and assembling a rifle, target practice, or boot camp training. I'm not aware that any training including, included guns. Operatives were not trained to use firearms. That's evidence row A6. The chamber need only consult the video of Mr. Stanisic and Samadovic briefing Slobodan Milosevic at the Rady Kostic Center ceremony on the 4th of May, 1997, to compare the expert Milosevic's evidence about, was, about what was authorized training to the training that these accused were really conducting in their many training centers in Croatia, Bosnia, and Serbia. For an organization that, according to the expert Milosevic, didn't handle arms and weaponry, these accused and their subordinates handled a lot of arms and weaponry. Milosevic affirmed his ICTY trial testimony in the first case, stating that he was unable to cite any legal provision that would have made it possible to deploy state security personnel outside of Serbia to Croatia in 1991 or to Bosnia in 1995 to engage in joint combat operations with other Serb forces. This chamber knows that they did just that. Mr. Milosevic testified that it was common knowledge that the purpose of the JATD, the anti-terrorist unit, created in August of 93, was to fight urban and rural terrorism. Since the JATD was established for anti-terrorist activity, Mr. Milosevic said, it was implied that this was for activities inside Serbia. Our evidence shows that the JATD was deployed outside Serbia into Bosnia in Operation Pauk, in the Banya, opera Banya Luka operations in Bosnia in 1995. It was not combating rural, rural terrorism and extremism in Serbia. Of course, the DB did engage in its basic mandated function of intelligence and counterintelligence, the lawful role described by Milosevic. Operation Thompson, which Stanisic refers to in his brief, is an example of that, which I will address in a few minutes. But when it came to doing the things that contributed to the planned, intended, and violent removal of non-Serb peoples from those areas in Croatia and Bosnia that were the designated Serb territories, the expert Milosevic is telling us that these accused acted outside their official intelligence gathering function, using the DB to facilitate those activities. Now, Your Honors, of course, it's not per se illegal for these accused to act so far beyond their lawful competencies. But it is telling that when they were doing so here, they were engaged in activities that contributed to the common criminal purpose. We have other important evidence that confirms this. It's from one of Mr. Stanisic's own witness, witnesses, Ristic, who was an official of Serbian DB's third administration. He testified that Stanisic was not, quote, operationally active, unquote, carrying out his formal DB responsibilities in 1991 because of a power dispute at the time between Stanisic and his then boss, DB Chief Yanochkovich. 
While claiming that Stanisich was inactive, the chamber will recall that this witness was unaware of other things that Stanisich was in fact doing in 1991, which in fact advanced the common criminal plan. We referred Mr. Ristich to evidence of Mr. Stanisich's activities in the spring of 1991, such as the meeting in May that year in Sarajevo with JCE members Milan Martic, Milan Babic, Radovan Karadzic, and the meeting in Kanin with Milan Babic in April of that year. Of course, this witness was unaware of Mr. Stanisic having engaged in those activities. We asked Mr. Ristich whether activities like this fell within Mr. Stanisic's Serbian DB functions. And the witness said that in his view, they did not. He was right. This is evidence row A9. The time frame on this period of alleged operational inactivity varies widely. Ristich claimed that Stanisic was inoperative for all of 1991. Another Serbian DB, DB witness, Lekovic, testified that it lasted during April to October 1991. Stanisic appears now in his brief to narrow the period to April to July 1991. This is evidence row A10. Whatever it was, the bottom line on this defense is that it in fact supports the prosecution case. First, we all know that Stanisic was active throughout 1991. If we can bring up the next slide, please. We know that in April of 1991, as I just mentioned, Stanisic, together with Samadovic, Dragan Filipovic, and Dragan Vasilkovic, known as Captain Dragan, all met in Kanin with JCE member Milan Babic. Stanisic himself confirms this in his OTP suspect interview, stating that in April or May of 1991, he was ordered to collect information on what was happening in Kanin. In May of 1991, Stanisic was in Sarajevo at Karadzic's apartment, meeting with Karadzic, Milan Babic, Milan Martic. As Ms. Harbour will refer to later in her submissions, in of June of 1991, Stanisic, Stanisic deployed his C DB subordinate, Radi Kostic, into the SBWS region in Croatia. In August of 1991, Stanisic was back in Kenin to, ret to retrieve Captain Dragon. And as he acknowledges in his own brief at paragraphs 54 to 57, Stanisic formed the so-called nascent unit in late 1991. And as your honors will recall, in October of 1991, witness RFJ 17, General Vasilievich referred to a report of the JNA security organ in Eastern Slavonia, reporting that Stanisic and Radovan Karadzic, Baja, commanding the Serb police and TO forces in SBWS, were meeting with JNA commander Aaron Jelovic in that region. When asked about Stanisic's involvement in some of these activities in 1991, Mr. Ristich stated what we'll see in the next slide. I'll go ahead. His quote, his, he said as follows, quote, Stanisic was not operative in the sense that he was not carrying out his duties and the tasks of the Serbian DB based on the systemization of posts. Apart from that, whether he was doing anything or not, it's something I can't say. What we see is that during the period of his alleged operational activity, Stanisic was indeed active, working abroad in Croatia and Bosnia, 
interacting with other JCE members who were implementing the common criminal plan. He may have been doing things outside of his systemization of posts, but he was indeed active. In shedding li this light on how Jovic Stanisic and Samadovic were acting beyond their authority as DB officials and using the DB to engage in activities beyond its mandate to advance the common criminal purpose, expert witness Milosevic and Ristich both confirmed the evidence of a third witness, General Vasilievich, RFJ 17. This witness used the term Voinalinia, the military line, to describe basically the same thing. If we could see the next slide, please. Stanisic, Samadovich, and other JCE members acting outside their competency to advance the common criminal purpose. This is how this witness referred to it. The term Voinalinia denotes the activities of certain people from the MUP and state security of Serbia and others who outside their usual professional duties engaged in activities which did not come under their competence and related to the formation and the deployment of paramilitary units to certain parts of the theater of war. That's in evidence row A12. Your honors will recall that Vasilievich then goes on to identify various members or persons associated with this Voinalinia or military line. So despite the claims of Stanisic and Samadovich throughout their briefs that they were just acting within their legitimate function as Serbian DB officials gathering evidence, our evidence proves otherwise. Three witnesses coming from three vastly different backgrounds all make it clear that the accused were all acting outside their competencies. And notably, the expert Milosevic and Mr. Ristic both each independently confirm the testimony and evidence of General Vasilievich on this. Now, Your Honors, I will take I will make three points about Operation Thompson. Can I ask the registrar, please, how much uh, time is remaining in the hour that uh, I was looking to take? I know we started a few minutes early or late. We started at 9.37. Thank so. you. Your Honors, I'll make three points about Operation Thompson. You'll recall that Thompson was Serbian MUP operation designed to monitor and suppress the activities of extremists and terrorists in Serbia to prevent attacks against Serbian citizens, including its minorities. Citing Operation Thompson, this is his brief at paragraphs 146, 157, and Annex I. Mr. Stanisic argues that he could not have criminal intent because through Operation Thompson he was using the DB to protect minorities in Serbia. The problem with that, of course, is that the evidence shows overwhelmingly that Stanisic and Samadovic, acting through the DB, were at the same time contributing to a joint criminal plan to attack non-Serbs on a massive scale across the border outside of Serbia in Bosnia and Croatia. Mr. Ristich confirmed that Operation Thompson did not apply outside of Serbia. Extremists and criminals had to behave themselves in Serbia, but they were free to cross over into Croatia and Bosnia to do their business. According to Mr. Ristich, under Operation Thompson, weapons could not be imported into Serbia, but there was nothing about operation that prevented exportation of arms from Serbia outside to Bosnia and Croatia. Thompson was about keeping the peace at home in Serbia. Milosevic did not want any trouble at home. The extremism and the crime he exported to Bosnia and in Croatia through these accused and the other JCE members. The last point on Thompson is this. 
Ristich testified that the activities of Archon and the Serbian Volunteer Guard as a paramilitary unit put them clearly within the scope of Operation Thompson. Shockingly, however, Ristich and another DB official, RJS04, testified that Archon and the Serbian Volunteer Guard were under the protection of the Serbian DB throughout the entirety of the conflict. They were not subject to the enforcement of Operation Thompson. Your Honors, in our submission, it is now beyond dispute that Archon and the Serbian Volunteer Guard were a unit of the Serbian Ministry of Interior. They were sent to the SVWS region by JCE member Radmilo Bogdanovic and placed under the field command of JCE member and MUP public security official Radovan Stojicic. Ristich testified that everyone in Stanisic's DB knew that Archon was off limits, not subject to the full regime of measures available to them under Thompson to suppress and stop acts of terrorism. <clears throat> if we could go to the next slide, please. I want to bring up one part of the final trial brief submitted by Mr. Stanisic. On this point, Stanisic asserts, the proposition that the DB should also have arrested Archon is a utopian assertion designed to prejudice Stanisic. Archon's links with high officials from Bogdanovic, the Serbian Ministry of Defense, Baja, Bjorcevic, and others are well documented. The proposition that there was a possibility to effectively prosecute or even arrest Archon is a conclusion devoid of any real attempt to understand the responsibilities of the DB within the politics of the time. So now Stanisic states that he made a political decision to protect Archon. However, none of those whom Stanisic now blames for Archon's crimes had the power or responsibility under um, Operation Thompson to deal with Archon. Bogdanovic, despite his continuing influence, had stopped being the Serbian Minister of Interior in March of 1991. Baja was a public security section official in 1991 but he was not at Stanisic's level, and he was deployed into the SBWS commanding Archon. Baja was not responsible for implementing Operation Thompson. Mr. Strig, if I may interrupt briefly, I just want to state for the record and to keep everybody on track that the seven minutes um, that you lost, according to the registrar's calculation, for simplicity, we'll just add it on as we go along. So following the schedule, the carefully calibrated schedule that we have, we'll just read everything as, as running seven minutes later. Please continue. So we will then continue until uh, FTL. 37 FTL. Thank you. The Serbian Ministry of, Interior, uh, of Defense and Bjorcevic had no responsibilities under Thompson. It was only Stanisic who had the authority and the legal responsibility under Serbian law to implement Operation Thompson to prevent Archon from operating. And the fact is, Stanisic's Serbian DB protected Archon for four years because he was providing valuable contributions to the common criminal purpose. And your honors, as we describe in our brief, by the time of their deployments to Operation Palk in 1994 and their Banja Luka operations deployment to Sansky Most in 1995, Stanisic had Archon and the Serbian Volunteer Guard on the DB's payroll. On this, refer, we refer your honors to Annex E2 of our final trial brief and the DB's payment to Serbian Volunteer Guard. Actually, St Stanisic now claims he didn't know who was on his payroll, which brings us to the last point we want to make about the DB. Stanisic claims that those closest to him and the DB, his subordinates, 
Frankie Samarovich, Stanisic's longtime deputy, Tabachevich, and others, Dragan Filipovich, who was second or chief of the second administration in 1995, that they were all going behind his back on frolics of their own. Hiring and requisitioning DB personnel and equipment, engaging in military operations abroad, all without his knowledge or approval. Actually, this is not so much a claim or an assertion as it is a sort of hypothetical proposal. If we could bring up the next slide, please. <clears throat> In his brief at paragraph 104, Stanisic says, in hindsight, the DB structure placed too much trust in the second administration. Paragraph 131 of his brief, he asserts, there was nothing to prevent high-ranking officials such as Samadovich and the others from requesting equipment and supplies to carry out their own activities. The next paragraph of his brief, the procedure that someone might have initiated to receive supplies for a group of reserves may have gone as follows. Hindsight, may have, would have, could have, should have. Stanisic's problem is that there is no evidence that this happened, and it did not happen. One well-placed DB official, RJS03, made clear that Stanisic was very well informed, testifying that the reporting system in the RDB was structured to ensure that Stanisic received all of the information he needed to make decisions. Svetkovic, another Serbian DB employee, testified that Stanisic was, quote, an extraordinary manager, an extraordinary operative, end quote. That's evidence row A-17. The defense expert Milosevic testified that the Serbian DB had processes and procedures in place to uncover corrupt or illegal activity on the part of its personnel. This is how the system was designed, evidence row 18. And your honors, it was Jovica Stanisic who designed the system. He was responsible for the re reorganization of the Serbian state security at the beginning of 1992 when he became its chief. The fact is, Your Honors, we'll bring up the next slide. The fact is, Your Honors, Stanisic knew everything. But don't take my word for it. In the end, it's best up best by what Stanisic himself said in his 8, 28 January 1992 conversation with Radovan Karadzic, Stanisic said, I don't know what you know, but we know everything. Your Honors, there is no reasonable basis for this chamber to conclude that Stanisic did not know and approve of every significant deployment of DB personnel and every significant action taken by his subordinates, including Franko Samadovich, that advanced the common criminal plan. His desperate attempt now to shift blame to the others must be rejected. Your Honor, I see the time. The prosecution is going to rest on its brief, its written submissions in respect to the contributions on channels of communication and arming rather than taking more time for that after the break. Thank you. So we return at 11.07. All rise. We will be.